Hey Canucks fans, let's talk about our bottom six and who has stood out to you for the right or wrong reasons. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. It's my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, April the 23rd. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Credible, Nux fan number 29, Lucas Gates, Chris S. and Adam Broomfield. Thanks for your support as always. And thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video description. And you can become a member of the CCC crew by pressing join underneath this or any of my videos or clicking on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Speaking of membership, this Sunday at 7 p.m., my first ever Zoom call for all franchise and Hall of Fame members. So I'll send you that link. I'll send that link out on Sunday morning and hopefully you get it in your inbox or your notifications, however your email is set up to YouTube. And the other thing is thanks to everyone who joined me for my post-game live stream last night. 3 nothing loss to Ottawa. Yeah, um, people weren't too upset. They kind of knew that a, a loss was going to come eventually. It just happens. It was strange that we beat the best team in our, in our um, division twice, yet we couldn't score on the supposed worst team in our division. So I'm not going to go much too, uh, too much in the game right now. I did that in the live stream. did that in my post-game recap as well. Tonight, actually, sorry, tomorrow... Uh, the Vancouver Canucks play against the Senators again in the evening. But tomorrow is my biggest work event of the year, the Big Grade 7 Rally. For those of you who have been following me for, for years, you know that around November, I usually do a couple of vlogs from Surrey, either the hotel or the Pacific Academy, the massive Christian school out there, because we have our massive Grade 7 Rally, um, the biggest actually Catholic rally in Canada. Well, this year, because of COVID, we had to move it online. We bumped it to the spring to at least buy, buy us some more time. So it's going to be a virtual event, but we're running it out of my office tomorrow. All to say, tomorrow I'll like, uh, likely be vlogging from my office, if at all, prior to tomorrow night's game. But wish us luck if you want to wish me luck if for our big event. Still 1,500 participants online tomorrow, so we're excited about that. Okay, let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks. They practiced this morning. It was an optional practice, and basically they, all, they could have probably built it... Um, as you didn't have to practice if you're really good or really old. There's a couple exceptions so I'll get to in a second, but Pedersen's still hurt, of course. But we, guys like Horvat, Miller, Besser, Demko, they did not take the ice today. Also, Hughes, Hamannick, Schmidt, Myers, and then, um, so those are among the notables, and Brandon Sutter. Those are among the notables who did not practice. So let's quickly go through excuse me, who was on the ice, and then we'll talk about the bottom six, who all of them were on the ice today, except for Brandon Sutter. So in goal, you actually had Braden Holtby and Arthur Silovs playing um, in net today, so that means Demko and Di Di Pietro were not practicing today. Then um, on the blue line, only the big four from last night did not practice, so Hughes, Hamnick, Schmidt, and Myers were not on the ice. Edler was, because he's probably trying to make sure he's getting his legs going after playing one game or a bit of one game before getting tossed. So Edler was on the ice, as well as Yolevi and Chatfield, the two defensemen from last night, the two bottom pairing guys. Then you also had Brogan Rafferty, you had Ashton Sautner, and then you also had um, newcomer Madison Bowie wearing number four. So Bowie on the ice, Edler, Sautner, Rafferty, Yolevi, and Chatfield be interesting to see who plays on Saturday night. You have your big four that did play of Hughes, Hamnick, Schmidt, Myers. Edler's going to be one of those. So then if you play Edler, do you keep, um, you know, you levy in. So you go Hughes, Edler, and you levy in the left. Go Myers, Schmidt can bounce from left to right. And then one of Bowie or Chatfield, that's one option. Or you keep Schmidt on the left and you go Edler, Schmidt, and and um, Hughes, of course, and then you're right, you'd have Myers, Chatfield, and then you bring in Bowie there. To me, it doesn't make sense to have uh, Bowie and Chatfield in at the same time. I would actually keep your levy in the left, keep your levy in, move Schmidt to the right, and then bring in either Bowie or Chatfield, take your pick. So that's who's on D today. Edler, Bowie, Chatfield, your levy, Sautner, and Rafty. Breezebaugh is, uh, is back um, on the taxi squad, so to speak. Or maybe it was re even reassigned, I'm not sure. Then up front, again, without PD, still injured, and Pearson, Horvat, Miller, Besser, and Sutter, you still had 12 forwards. And that would be basically everyone that's playing in the bottom six or has played in the bottom six. So um, let's see if I can get this right. 12 forwards. So it was VC and Vertanen, Highmore and Herlick. 
Harlech. It was Gravac and Michaelis, Boyd, McEwen, Erickson, Colind, and then two players returning from injury in non-contact jerseys, but great to see them on the ice. Actually, I don't know if Mott was in a non-contact jersey. Jay Beagle was in a non-contact jersey for sure. And then Tyler Mott was skating. But uh, given that Travis Green really hopes that Tyler Mott can play on Saturday, I hope Tyler Mott can play on Saturday. Maybe he wasn't wearing a non-contact jersey. But again, it was VC, Vertanen, Gravac, Michaelis, Boyd, Lind, Harluck, Highmore, McEwen, Erickson. It's hard to do this by memory. And then um, the two returning injured players, Beagle and Mott. So let's talk about our bottom six. And in particular, we're going to talk about Brandon Sutter. We know what we have in him. Um, I, I think all signs point to them not re-signing him this season, uh, this offseason, but we'll see. You never know. They re-signed Tanner Pearson after all. But you have all these guys that are making... Well, Vertanen doesn't, but... Um, you, you have all these guys that have just come to the team either they, from the start of this year or we picked them up on waivers or, or traded for them that are making $1 million or less. So guys like Travis Boyd, Jimmy VC, the two guys from Toronto, Matthew Highmore, Gaudette Trade, Jace Harlock, free agent. So there's at least those four. Then you have Jake Bertani who's making $2.5 million, and then Tyler Monty who's making a bit more than that. Louis Erickson is making a lot of money. So he's the one that kind of goes against the whole theory of if you're really good or really old, you didn't have to play today because um, Erickson and Edler were out there. And then, um, so, you know, I, I don't think, I don't really count Erickson as a factor. Um, so I really want to talk about really the four new guys, the four cheap guys that are all um, either UFAs or they only have one more year left on the contract. Um, it'll be really interesting, interesting to see not only what happens in the, the final 16 games, but really who's in their bottom six next season because you can basically say it's going to be in the top six it'll be Pedersen Miller Besser Horvat and then two of Pearson Hoglander and Podkolzin two of those three will be in the top six that means one of those three will be in the bottom six so already one of those three bottom six spots are uh, like I said Pearson Hoglander or Podkolzin and then Tyler Mott's a, gi a given for sure and Jake Vertanen if they don't move him so you kind of need a couple centers in there so is Travis Boyd someone who can fill that but yeah, you have all these guys, Boyd, Highmore, VC, um, Harluck, and then Michaelis has played, Gravex played, there's McEwen, there's Erickson. There's so there's so many of these players that are are just okay. They don't really move the needle per se, but you still need um, uh, production from your bottom six. You need good defensive awareness from your bottom six. You need effort. You need forecheck. You need good defensive responsibility. Travis Green likes speed in his bottom six. So Tyler Watt is a guy who can skate. Jake Vertanen is a guy who can skate. And Vertanen, to his credit, I know Trudz will be happy to hear me say this, he's played well in the past couple games. Some noticeable hits. So I like Mott. I like Vertanen. I think those guys are shoe-ins. And then um, after that, it's tough to say who's going to be in the lineup. So let's talk about some of the, the other four guys in particular. Let's talk about tonight. Uh, right now, I mean, let's talk about Highmore, VC, Boyd, and Harlech. Highmore's played two games. One of them was on the fourth line. Last night, he was on the second line. Noticeable because he works really hard. We, he came in with the pedigree of being a two-way uh, two forward, plays both sides, maybe more consistently defensively than Gaudet. But I'm not sure what kind of offensive capability he has. He might be noticeable because he's working hard, he's getting to the front of the net, but how much finish does he have? How much it will he be able to um, set up uh, other line mates? So Matthew Highmore, because of his speed and his tenacity, he is the one who I am quite interested in. Jace Harlock, he can be a bit of an agitator. Him and Haimar are kind of similar that way. He can be a bit of an agitator. Um, you know, he sometimes draws penalties, sometimes takes penalties. He, I think he has one or two goals this season, but I'm not sure if I've seen enough from him to say that's one guy that we have to keep for sure next year. I like his attitude. He's always, uh, I don't know you notice, it's like he's got no neck. So when he's when he's celebrating, it's just like a head on top of uh, some shoulders. And he's kind of like this. I don't know if you guys saw that when, when the Canucks won uh, in their first game back. But I, I like Harlech's uh, attitude for sure. Just don't know if he's going to do enough, shown enough to, um, you know, to make an impact and be here next year. Jimmy VC, I think we're starting to see why he's kind of hasn't really stuck. He's, he's not very noticeable. He, kind of becomes invisible sometimes, hasn't scored yet for the Canucks, uh, says all the right things, smart player, but I'm not sure if he's going to be a difference maker. He's the one guy that I wanted to be a difference maker. He's the one of the four that we're talking about that I actually got the most excited about, 
but I'm not sure if he's going to stick around. And then you have Travis Boyd, who I think gives you a bit more versatility. You could play him at center. So I think that's what puts them ahead of VC, Highmore, and, and Harlock a little bit, is that you can put, although Highmore's listed as center, he doesn't play center. You could put Boyd at center, as they did last night. And um, I, I like Boyd's game. And he's, you know, he's played in Washington. He's played in Toronto. VC's played in, in even more places. But I, I think I, I would take Boyd over VC at this point. And um, I'd take Highmore over Harlock. So if I had to rank them, potential and fit, I would go Boyd, Highmore, VC Harlock, but VC and Harlock could switch. But yeah, that for for me that's the ranking is Boyd, Highmore, VC and Harlock. Boyd's versatility and his work rate, Highmore also his work rate and two way ability. And then let's go. If I had to pick one, I'll put VC slightly. I still think he's got more offensive potential than Harlock and Harlock's. Uh, you know, works hard, good enthusiasm, but I'm not sure if he's done enough to stick. So, you know, you talk about those four guys. I'd love to hear your comments on those guys: Boyd, VC, Highmore, and Harlock. But you can also talk about Erickson who I don't think will figure in the team's plans. Zach McEwen, who, who um, you know, he's got the size, he hits, he does more physically than any of those guys I mentioned, but I'm not sure about his speed. If he's got the wheels just, uh, you know, to make an impact and to be the player that Travis Green wants him to be. Brandon Sutter likely going on. And I think Vertanen, Mott, and Puck Holzen, for instance, will be, will, be, um, will be guys that will go, you know, make the lineup for sure so are there is there two spots open is there three spots you notice that we need a center uh, so Boyd maybe gets one of those spots um, and we still need another center actually so a lot of things we can do you could you could go Miller Horvat and Peter, Pedersen make those the three centers whatever order so many things that the Canucks can do next season but for now I really want to focus on the bottom six and really those four guys that are new Boyd VC Harlock and Highmore in a very small sample size for some of those guys how would you rank them right now as impact players for the Canucks and potential of a stick? My order is Boyd, Highmore, VC, Harluck. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below and you can talk about them. Bottom six, Canucks, Senators, whatever you want to talk about, leave a comment. I'll do my best to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of the channel if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.